Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial about character abilities. I'm Renault and today we're going to see together what character abilities are, how you can use the existing character abilities that are included in the engine, and how you can create new ones. So for example, if I select my Space Corgi sprite sheet here in this scene, um, we can see that it has quite a bunch of uh, components on it. So um, we can see that uh, some of them start with character. Most of, uh, if not all, the mm -hmm. ones that start with character are character abilities. They all relate to the character script, which is the central point, and that will be the interface for all the character abilities. It's the one responsible for triggering their various faces, and we'll see all that in details. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, this is one of the really default characters so it, it has almost all of them um, starting with the character horizontal movement script uh, this one handles basic left and right movement uh, friction ground hit detection stuff like that uh, from its inspector you can define the walk speed you can define the effects when uh, the character touches the ground uh, it can be a particle effect it can be um, some sound effects then we have character crouch uh, character crouch handles the crouch of course and crawl behaviors uh, from its inspector you can determine the crouch speed so right now it's half of uh, the horizontal movement speed so when you when you crawl you you crawl uh, twice slower as um, when you were walking and uh, you can also define uh, the size of the collider when you're crouching so that way it's uh, smaller and it allows you to crawl into tunnels and stuff like that i won't go into details over um, all the abilities basically what you need to do is that for each action that your character can perform you have an ability you have the option to add all the abilities to your character but maybe you at, at no point in your game uh, with your character be able to climb ladders for example so you can just you know remove or just not add um, the components so what what does exactly an ability do um, if you want to see that we can simply go into the code uh, I'm just gonna open the character crouch um, ability close all these other files and I'm gonna go into uh, the character ability class this class does nothing by itself uh, it's just a class uh, that is meant to be overridden uh, so for example uh, character crouch extends character ability and that will be the case for character dash and all the other classes so uh, back to character ability we can see that it, it does it still does uh, some stuff uh, first of all, we have this uh, initialization method, uh, as the name implies, that's where the base class will get parts of the character or the scene uh, that will be regularly useful in all abilities. Uh, if, for some reason, your ability specifically needs uh, another component, another information, that's uh, in this initialization uh, method that you'll do it. So um, let's have a look at an example of that. Uh, for example, in character crouch we override initialization uh, we tell it to do exactly what is done in the, the parent um, class and then we set a boolean that we have in a tunnel to false then moving on we've got the animation methods uh, these are here that's where we register um, our animator uh, our animation parameters and then we have a second one uh, which is called update animator and uh, i've lost for some reason update animator here and in this one um, that's where we will update all, all, all our animator parameters then we have a method called handle input uh, in the base class it does nothing but if we have a look at um, the character crouch for example uh, we'll see that that's the place where you want to handle input as the name implies so for example here um, we check that if uh, the primary movement vertical axis of our input manager is below a threshold, a threshold that we've uh, specified we'll call the crouch method 
for the like for example in the the jump class um, if we have a look at the, the implementation of um, this handle input method uh, that I've lost again and on input here uh, we see that uh, we check if we are pressing uh, uh, the jump button down or up and if that's the case we call the appropriate method then if we go back to uh, character ability we'll see that we have uh, these three methods early process ability process ability and late process ability um, these are methods that are, are called by the state machine of uh, the character at each update so uh, um, a character will call each process ability late process ability early process ability uh, in the order that you've got here at each update and it's the character that is responsible to do that uh, it will only call uh, the ones that are relevant at a certain uh, period in time and that's how the abilities are executed um, we have also a bunch of methods. We have flip that is called um, when the character flips. So you can say that maybe in your specific ability or your character crouch, maybe uh, you do something special when the character flips. Maybe you reset something. Uh, we also have uh, the reset ability. Uh, this is called when the character gets killed uh, just before it responds. So uh, that's something where you want to maybe reset a boolean stuff like that and uh, we also have a bunch of uh, sound related methods like uh, playability start sound effects uh, and the same for stop uh, when it's being used and so on um, usually you will not want to change these uh, but they will allow you to uh, in in your uh, character you'll be able to to set for each ability uh, sound effects directly uh, as long as you extend the, the base ability class uh, you'll be able to set these kind of, of sounds here so just just before i was talking about um, a state machine so if we go into the character class you will see that um, i've lost them obviously but yeah here we have two state machines um, we have the movement state and the condition state state machines the character component is responsible for triggering the various abilities uh, that is done using these two state machines state machine is a design pattern that will basically store a current state and the previous one um, you can look at all the details you've got the code uh, it's in the mm tools folder but basically uh, the movement state is accessed via the uh, underscore movement property from any ability it represents the current action the character is performing so uh, maybe your movement state will be crouching or wall jumping or jumping and then we have the condition state here um, and you can access it also from any ability using I think it's underscore condition yeah here uh, and this one will store the current status of the character. It can be normal, dead, posed, etc. The way it works, uh, these state machines, is that at the start of the scene, the character will initialize all abilities. Then at every frame, it will call early process, process, and late process methods in that order, and eventually reset them on death. Um, other state machine implementations would usually only call the current state ability on update this one doesn't for a number of reasons but mostly to make it easy to extend the system without having to rewrite everything or modify existing classes this means that each ability is responsible for handling its own input preventing the entry into its methods by testing if the current state allows it um, for example you you cannot walk uh, while not grounded um, most abilities included in the engine don't use early process or late process but uh, if you need or want to that's still a possibility so um, let's say I want to create a new ability um, and maybe an ability that will allow my character to double its size not really useful but um, yeah let, let's do that in that does that in, in Mario for example so the first thing to do is go to um, the documentation uh, if I go to well character abilities I'm already on, on that page if I go to the bottom there's an, an example of um, 
some sort of template that you can use. So I'm, I'm just going to copy it and uh, go back to my uh, character and uh, let's say I'm, I'm going to put that into into minimal. I'm, I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. Of course, you can place that wherever you want. And here I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call it um, character group. I'm just going to paste that here and um, yeah, I'm really good to go. So I just need to change that into character grow, save, let that compile. Yes. The first thing uh, I want to do now is to add this new ability to my character. So I'm, I'm going to select my space query spreadsheet. Well, first of all, First of all, I'm going to move into the minimal level. That way, if I use debug stuff, I won't be bothered by all the other um, characters in the scene. So uh, here I am. I'm going to press play, see what happens. So I've got my character, everything's fine. I'm going to go into prefabs, playable characters, rectangle, which is the character used by this uh, demo level. It already has uh, quite a bunch of um, Abilities, I'm, I'm going to add my uh, new ability to it and for some reason I don't see it. Um, why is that? Rips. I love that when that happens. Um, well, no. Not sure what happened, um, but it works. Okay, so I've I've added my character grow uh, ability. As you can see, it comes with a bunch of stuff that I will need to rewrite. So uh, first of all, here we have the to do help box text. So that's something that you can add to your uh, component, and and it creates these nice looking information boxes. I'm gonna just write uh, something basic like uh, character grow is a component that allows you to double your character's size when pressing the jump button. I won't be. Um, uh, I'm gonna write grow parameters here and uh, I think the only thing we're gonna need is a uh, size multiplier and by default it will be two and so here random bool does not exist yeah sure all right so here my Inspector should refresh, and I do now have my nice box. My ability is permitted, and uh, my size multiplier is two. All right. So um, now what I'm going to do is write a method that that uh, makes actually my my character grow. So uh, I'm going to write uh, protected virtual void grow, and say. Uh, when it's cold, I want my transform for the local scale to be multiplied by my size multiplier. So um, by default, um, my size multiplier is two. So every time I'll call grow, it, it will just double my local size. That's really simple. Um, but by default, this does nothing. So what I'm going to do is in handle input, uh, I'm gonna modify that uh, so that every time I press the jump button, I I double the size. So uh, what this will do is that probably it will jump as I already have a, a character jump um, ability, and uh, then I'm gonna double my size. So um, because I'm, I'm kind of lazy, I just uh, go into character jump and, and copy uh, that part. So what it says is um, every time the jump button is pressed, that's what this does, uh, I'm gonna call grow. 
And now if I press play, I can move my character around and uh, if I jump, I double in size up to a point where it's not really manageable anymore. But uh, basically <laughs> the job is done. Of course, we would, uh, in a normal game, we would add uh, probably booleans to, uh, or, or counters anyway, to uh, limit the number of times we can grow, or maybe we would expand the level, whatever. But as you can see, creating a new ability is extremely simple. Um, there's also stuff uh, I could do on process ability, for example. Maybe when, when I jump, I, I get bigger, but uh, every frame I get a bit smaller. So uh, let's try and do that. So uh, one, one way to do that would be uh, to add a new float here, a uh, new public float uh, that would be size, I don't know, size uh, reducer. And that would be 0.1f, for example. Let's see what it does. So um, in, in process ability here, I would do, uh, so this is called every frame, uh, the local scale, uh, minus equal, size reducer, uh, dot time, dot delta time. And so if I press play, I'm, I'm just gonna zoom in because, uh, oh, I did an error. Minus equal cannot be applied. Yeah, of course, um, because because it's a vector three. Um, so what I'm going to do is vector dot uh, one vector dot one vector three. It's been a long day. Um, So as you can see, my character is getting bigger when I jump and it, it reduces its size uh, if I do nothing. All right, uh, just play again because I, I jump way too much. All right, so I have my character here and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Of course I should, uh, in, in a perfect world, I would um, change also the ray casts and so on because uh, right now I'm just doubling the size and that's that's really not the proper way to do that um, but as you can see we, we can uh, really simply in processability we can do uh, some nice stuff that is done uh, every frame all right so we've seen what abilities are we've seen how you can use uh, the abilities already included in the asset and we've seen how you can create some new abilities even if they are kind of stupid like this one um, i hope you put that knowledge to good use and create your own abilities to extend the system have a good day bye